Well, so I'm going to look at creating some data. And so suppose uh, I wanted to create data that, that goes with our example um, uh, final project. Uh, they had gender, athlete status, and GPA. Now, so what I, th what I would probably do is gender, so suppose we wanted um, half male, half female. Well, I would do this very much like we made our zeros and ones um, for uh, the original um, project one that we did and project two. Uh, well, I guess project one we did zero through nine. Uh, project two we did zeros and ones. So uh, actually, maybe I need to insert a column to the left here uh, just so I can keep track of. Um, I'm going to center that. Uh, actually, probably I'll center all these just so I can see them better. Um, so here's my case. There's case one, two, and once I do a couple of those, if I highlight and bring this down, so you know they had 200. So I'll go down here to 200. Whoops, too far. Um, so there are my cases uh, from. 1 to 200. Oops. Uh, now for gender, well, yeah, if we if we thought about 50 percent, um, then I would do my equals and if, and I'll just generate a random number between 0 and 1. So there's rand, um, and if that's less than 0 0.5 so there's my condition then um, what I'll do actually no we can do it easier than that we might have to do that for something else sometime but uh, actually we can just use the ran between so all one word ran between and we tell it uh, the bottom number 0 and the top number one and it should do those uh, uniformly so in other words half and half and so then once I do it one, once I can uh, drag it down you know I could do a, a copy and I could highlight a bunch of these and say paste or my my particular favorite is um, uh, if I just uh, go to this bottom where I would drag and double click uh, it fills it in all the way down to the bottom of that list to the left so that's a nice quick way but somehow I fill it in and I get a bunch of zeros and ones and then if I want about half athlete and half not uh, again remembering that they use zeros and ones um, I can uh, do that again. Whoops, had the wrong name, I guess. Ran, oh yeah, between. And then again, fill that in. And so there, I have a bunch of zeros and ones, and they're very random. Uh, now, one of the problems is that on some spreadsheets uh, various things like RAND and RAND between um, they can um, uh, change every time you hit enter uh, it, it depends on the spreadsheet now almost all spreadsheets uh, if you use RAND uh, everything changes when you hit enter if you use RAND between um, then uh, it changes uh, on some spreadsheets but not others and uh, we're going to actually use a, another random uh, thing here on the GPA so for the GPA what I can do is 
uh, suppose I want an average, uh, or, you know, I, ca I can make up my, my dependence on uh, gender and athlete. So suppose I wanted, um, uh, say, an average GPA, let's just start with something like a 3.0. So if I say equals 3, then, you know, if I hit enter, I get a 3. Okay, but now what I'm going to do is let's let's say that having a gender of female adds 0.1 um, to your GPA, and so uh, I'm going to say plus 0 0.1 and click gender. Oops, sorry, I need it asterisk in there uh, and click gender and now notice you know that's still a three but if I get down here to this one here it's a 3.1 okay I'm gonna delete those and now let's say and and I can make up whatever I want here point one or uh, something else but then let's say uh, for athlete status if you really want no difference you would add nothing here um, and that'd be fine you know you, you say there's no difference um, but um, let's let's just say for the heck of it um, athletes also tend to gain point one uh, 0 0.1 times the athletic status and there you see that's a 3.1 and when I get down here I get a 3.2 and there's a 3.1 and, and so forth so that gives me my basic model and um, but notice that's not random at all in that part and so what I can do is then add on a little bit of randomness and um, there are uh, a few ways to do it um, one is I can take a, a random number between 0 and 1 well actually that sounds good right because I would have the, the three and then add one and I get up to a four point well except I've got these point ones in here that'd be a four point two for some so that'd be too high so you know I could I could do something like um, 0 0.8 times a random number between 0 and 1 okay so rand between either gives me a 0 or a 1 but RAND gives me a number between 0 and 1. So I can do that and I hit enter and notice um, I get these GPAs that are now uh, different. But at, if I do enough of these I'll realize I do have another problem and that is that um, I'm never going to get anything below a three point because I added uh, something as far as the randomness. So again, I'm just going to get rid of those. And we have to probably get a little bit fancier. Um, so if I want the average to be three and a maximum of 4.0, but I'm doing this 0.8 rand, uh, again, right that's a problem so I need a number that goes up to 4 uh, or really 3.8 but I'd, I'd like uh, the chance to be below uh, a 3.0 as well so if I double this actually 1.6 and I take away uh, whoops okay I'll have to arrow over I guess uh, I could also edit way up here in this bar there, um, but I'm going to use my left arrow to get over here. 
right? Because the 1.6, I'm adding up to 1.8. And, and so if I start here at 2.2, then um, I'll still have this, this starting point of about a 3.0. Um, but I can go as low as a 2.2. So there's a 2.5, you know, and if I just pull a few of these down, well, these are all three points. But notice that 2.5 changed when I uh, did that. And looking down here, you see I have some two points and, and all that. Now, I'm going to have a GPA a little higher than three because, um, because of the gender and athletic status. And, and so I could try to take care of that as well. Um, now, so, so this, is, this is one way to try to do this. It, it starts getting tough in some ways if you put too many conditions on it. So for instance, for the, the um, example one where they generated this kind of data, uh, they wanted no lower than a 2.5. Uh, and we go clear down to a 2.2. Okay, so um, again, that that's okay. Um, you could mention that in your report if you had to do something like that. Is well, we we say we would only look at, at athletes at um, uh, 2.5 or above. But to give you an idea what the data looks like. Uh, we just had to use 2.2 to 4 because we didn't know how to do it any other way. Um, okay, you know, because uh, again, this is just made up data that we want to work with anyway. And now, uh, so I've made that data, and um, this is kind of the way they uh, looked at this. Now, there there is a, a slight problem with these with the data this way. Um, well, I guess, no, not really. Uh, what I wanted to talk about was an interaction term, and uh, that's mentioned in your text, interaction term. And we could throw that in, is, is what happens if somebody is uh, both female and an athlete? Is that, does that do anything? And again, in this formula, what I could do is, if I wanted an interaction term that, that if somebody was uh, in this case both female and uh, an athlete would that actually boost their GPA even just a little bit more or would that subtract from their GPA just a little bit um, you know I could put in a term like that and so that would be something like plus uh, or minus let's say let's say being female and an athlete actually takes just a little bit away um, like uh, 0 0.05 uh, and then times um, my B2 and C2. So there's B2 uh, and then times um, C2. And, uh, and I could do that and then uh, redo my data. Now I have noticed with like Microsoft Excel that um, if you uh, already have something filled in like this and you try that double click, um, I don't think it's worked for me. Uh, but um, you can still you know, just grab it and drag down or copy and paste or something like that. Just make sure you update everywhere when you do it. Uh, but there, there I've added an interaction term and um, actually adding that interaction term you see I end up having three things here the the B2 alone C2 alone and then B2 times C2 well we'll notice that that if instead I had um, done uh, something like this where it was uh, male and athlete uh, male and non-athlete, uh, female and athlete, and male and non-athlete, 
and I I try to do um, ones or zeros in each of those, but I could I can only have uh, a single one or a single uh, zero or something like that. Notice this is uh, three or sorry four categorical variables that way, and if I use dummy variables for it. Um, I, I would actually need three dummy variables and so hopefully you're you're following this idea is that uh, if I needed um, four dummy variables uh, or sorry three dummy variables for this it wouldn't really look any different than this because I could just have a column that was the the B2 times C2 and um, and so uh, you know the the dummy variables of of the four levels of categories uh, is no different than having these two separate categories and then having an interaction term. Okay, uh, now so the last thing I want to show you is that remember that you know every time I hit enter, you know say I put a, something here and I hit enter, all those numbers change. I hit backspace to, to get rid of that. All those numbers change. Well, I don't want them to keep changing and changing my plots and so forth as I'm trying to do a report. And so what you want to do is let's add a sheet. And I am going to actually, I think if I just highlight the, col the top columns up here, the A, B, C, and D, and do a copy. Now come here to sheet two and just click up in this left corner. And now I'm going to do a paste special and just the, the well, let's see. I guess I have to go here to paste special because I, I want to do more than text because there is text and number. I want to do more than number because there is text and number. So I'll click this space, paste special. Every, everything has it. You just use uh, paste special in your, in your stuff. And notice this says text and numbers. I've already got that clicked that way, and so I say OK. And there we go. Now I could also have uh, mentioned the formatting because notice that nothing's centered now, but I can also, since everything's highlighted, I can go up here and, and just say center, and now it's all centered. But now notice, you know, if, if I hit enter, the numbers don't change. I clear that the numbers don't change and and so now I have my data set of all my different um, uh, gender athlete status and GPA and now if I want I can make some plots and uh, I could do a plot of uh, GPA and gender GPA and athlete status um, the probably the easiest one to do is uh, gender or sorry athlete status and GPA because they're right next to each other uh, but you can always move columns around or um, you know say I, I wanted to put these two columns together well, I can just again now that I've got them where they don't change uh, I could take uh, this column copy it come over here paste it. I can take this column, copy it, um, come over here and paste it. And now, you know, if I if I highlight those two columns and and insert a, a graph, so for me, I pick chart and I want to scatter plot and for right now I'll just say finish just so we can see it and notice they aren't very when you when you have these categorical variables like this let me try to make that a little smaller um, uh, let's see, move this over here make it a little smaller yet uh, but yeah notice not very interesting However, um, I can see that, that there might possibly be a slope here because the bottoms are a little different. 
tops are slightly different but actually notice it looks like there's just a slightly more bit of variability here than here now the reason these are showing up as bars is because it's doing dot dots a scatter plot with dots like this and so they just all run together and um, and so I uh, I have this and um, you know of course once I have my data over here uh, I could um, whoops uh, I could uh, do a quick regression and so uh, remember that your explanatory variables go uh, backward and so this is going to be athlete status here and gender here um, and and then my intercept there uh, now I could use a template for this um, but uh, I'm just gonna put it here I know that I need uh, those three and I need f five lines because I've done it often enough I remember that so I highlight those equals line asked um, my data uh, in Y so I do this I copy this all the way down and then a comma let me go back up here and um, whoops not sure what just happened oh it's there I can see it up here it just it's not showing up for whatever reason but uh, uh, up here it's very tiny for you to see but I can see it has the D2 through D2 201 and, and then comma and so now I add my explanatory variables now I can see it uh, not sure why it's disappearing um, what I'm gonna do is go well I can't see it now so I guess I'll go all the way to the bottom I was gonna uh, do a combination of highlighting and typing but this will do it and again I go to the top again it's not showing up but I'll do my comma now it shows up um, and then uh, one and a one one for the intercept and one to show everything uh, close it off and then it's a control shift and enter because it's a vector command and there we go and I can see uh, in my case right away I can tell that um, neither of these is going to have uh, a small p-value uh, here under gender notice the uh, uh, difference uh, the standard error is three times as big as the the slope itself so definitely that will will be um, uh, insignificant and and so we would say there's no slope there just as they found you know with their data um, and then uh, uh, again here uh, the standard error is a little more than half of the slope well I also know with, with this many data um, you know I, I need to be uh, out uh, farther than two times I need you know two and a half times or, or so and um, uh, so I don't don't think I'm going to get a, uh, a good p-value here now to be sure I would have to run that and, and get that but that would be part of my report but so you see I've generated data uh, similar to the um, example one I think I've generated it in a little better fashion than they did uh, now do I you know I could count up how many of each I have here um, uh, I could also sort uh, these columns uh, based on gender and then athlete status uh, so you know suppose I now and probably I want to would want to do the case as well um, although if if you left the case again it's in this case it's made up data but you you know you should do things as if they really matter and and so I'll go to date and sort our data and sort and I'm going to whoops 
Uh, I don't know what I just did there. Oh, oh I just uh, somehow I minimized that. Okay. Anyway, um, so we'll try that again. Uh, gender athlete status. So I want to sort by those probably gender first, then athlete status. Although just because I go left to right. Um, so again, I need to do a sort. Um, it says GPA. No, I don't want to do that. I want to do gender first. Then I'll sort again by athlete status. And I'll say OK. And now some of you, if you don't highlight every column, so there's data in these columns, you might get a warning. Um, but I don't want to sort the uh, lin s command. I want it just to sort this stuff. But what happens is when I sort it this way, it's easy for me to count. You know, because um, if I if I start here at line two, line two, and this goes down to um, line. 115 well that's um, 114 uh, females and so if it's 114 females then it's uh, uh, whatever that 200 minus 114 is for um, so that's uh, what is 86 86 males so it wasn't quite 50 50 but it was close to 50 50 and you know I could also uh, come down down here to count to how many uh, female athletes and I could I could see that that's at 67 over here so that's 66 female athletes um, out of the 114 females and so that leaves what uh, 58 non-athletes or wait no I guess the zeros were non-athletes maybe and, and at any rate, I can count those combinations of all four, and I've got their their GPAs and, and so forth in groups. Okay, so um, I think that uh, does it, um, and yeah, so that'll, that's good. You're probably getting tired of listening to me anyway, so I will finish there.